Oh my God. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I am talking about an over the top beautiful spring morning here <coughs> in the end times as this camera tries to find something to focus on it. Now, what are you trying to take a picture of? I am in the market for a new Canon power shot camera. If anybody has one of those lying around, uh, send me a message at Humpty Dumpty Tribe at gmail.com. What was the big ass dragonfly coming to share the dock with me? But it is a gorgeous. It is a Wednesday morning. It is April 24th, 2024, and I am here at this dock for the last time, for now anyway, having my planet-saving organic cup of coffee here to start off my day. And uh, so I am going to finish this planet saving organic cup of coffee and get in my gas sucking truck assuming my gator with the flat tire makes it home and we are heading back to New York baby and the road trip spring 24 begins heading back to New York baby to start the summertime adventure I already have eight Eight people signed up to come visit Bugs in a Jar Farm, so we would love to see you up there. But anyway, back on the road again. Back on the road again. Good Lord. How many more times will my uh, <coughs> aging body my aging truck and global industrial civilization and allow me to lead this life, the snowbird, sunbird lifestyle going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And, uh, just chasing the beautiful weather and the beautiful scenery. I dedicate my life to uh, spending the rest of my days in beautiful weather and beautiful scenery. So that is what I'm doing with my life to enjoy it while I still can. <clears throat> Taking advantage of both global industrial civilization to get me back and forth. And trusting this planet that it's got a few more years so I can get out of here. Uh, with the screen door just hitting me on my guilty ass on the way out. So anyway, I'm sure as I'm making the drive, I will be thinking about the same question that every one of us is thinking about. I don't care, I guess, if you're 12 or 102. And we have a, a question uh today from a millennial, a millennial who uh, <laughs> is still seeking the, the wisdom of his elders, and uh, <clears throat> this is, I don't have the exact question in front of me, but I'm, so I'm kind of paraphrasing. This is a fellow named Zachary, and his question is essentially, uh, what is it? So, Hambone, if you were, <clears throat> if you were one half the age you are now, which means if you were 32 years old in 2024 instead of 64 years old, and know what you know now, you know, what would you be doing, I guess, either the same or differently in your life uh, if you were 32 and 
instead of 64. So he is a young millennial trying to figure out how to uh, negotiate collapse as it ramps up and figuring out which way, what to do with his life. And he wants some advice from someone who thinks out of the box. So obviously, uh, <clears throat> it's not going to be that easy for me to put myself in the brain space of a 32-year-old uh, without going into uh, a fetal position at the bottom of a dark closet. Uh, 32 years old, well, I'm assuming Zachary did not mention that he had children. So obviously, Zach and anybody else who's able to have children, uh, it, it, it all boils down. It, it always boils down is uh, every time I get this question to the two commandments. There are two commandments, particularly to people of breeding age, and the number one commandment is thou shalt not breed. Absolutely do not bring a child uh, on, on, onto this planet. It, it, just, just don't do it for all kinds of reasons. Uh, and I would add, <clears throat> since you're not going to bring a child onto the planet, do what I did at age 22 and get a vasectomy. It takes 10 minutes. I don't know what it costs. You can arrange a low cost one. This call Planned Parenthood and <clears throat> tell them if you're 32, surely in the year 2024, a 32-year-old man should not have the problems I did as a 22-year-old in 1982. So get a vasectomy and just completely end any chance <clears throat> that you will bring a child into this planet. So that's the, <coughs> the, uh, the, the, the golden rule uh, is do not breed. And after do not breed, it is obviously get out there and enjoy it while you still can. And of course, there's several operative words in that sentence. Uh, the definition of enjoy and the definition of it. <clears throat> and uh, it has at least two meanings. It's get out there and enjoy global industrial and civilization while you still can. Because it, it, it's going to be the first to go. Uh, get out there and enjoy the fruits of global industrial civilization while you still can. And obviously, <clears throat> get out there and enjoy uh, this, uh, what, what's left of this beautiful planet while you still can. And believe it or not, it is still fairly easy to, uh, to find beautiful places on this planet, you just need to know where to look. Uh, New York and Florida. A lot of people would think New York and Florida in the year 2024. Who are you kidding? I'm afraid I have someone coming down to the dock. I might have to cut this short, but... Uh, and I would add beautiful weather to that. The older you get, the narrower your temperature range is going to get. So I would add trying to keep yourself in a temperature range between uh, 50 and 80 uh, is certainly a major part of my enjoyment. But that's tough to do without being able to go back and forth. Uh, at least while there are still winters up north. So uh, whatever you can do to, uh, to do that, 
the beautiful weather, the beautiful scenery, and of course the fruits of global industrial civilization. But past that, young man, it's uh, you got to fill in your own blanks as we as we all do, and, and of course as long as global industrial civilization and the global industrial economy is limping along, you, you have got to figure out money. You, you can't live without money. I don't give a damn what the preppers and the organic gardeners and all of that say. You can't live without money. So you're going to have to figure out some way to make money and uh, I know this is anathema to, uh, to millennials and Gen Zers, but it used to be, there used to be this saying, I think it might be ascribed to Benjamin Franklin, maybe, a penny saved is a penny earned. And uh, there are no wise, that the whole notion of being thrifty has gone out the window. The boomers were the last generation, uh, and even we fell apart. Uh, we were the last generation uh, who were taught on any level that a penny saved is a penny earned. And this is, I mean, you have got to stop being. Uh, led down the rosy path by these little trinkets and baubles and uh, so uh, uh, of course housing is going to be a major major uh, problem and I still say to this day to uh, do whatever you can to buy your own piece of property and and all of this uh, this crap that I hear from millennials and Gen Zers whining and moaning that they cannot afford a house. Bullshit. It might be a little tougher. Uh, I paid $35,000 for my little shack uh, on 14 acres in New York. Uh, and it, right now, uh, I, I, I could show you, you go on... New York Land Quest. Look up New York Land Quest, and you will find a whole selection of uh, of little cabins and whatnot on small pieces of land. I I know where there is a uh, a single wide trailer on an acre of land for nineteen thousand dollars. But the, the thing about it is the vast majority uh, of uh, people will not live in a single wide trailer. They, they would take one look at my house in New York and say, you're out of your fucking mind, Hambone. I'm not living in that run-down shack. And then you have no one but yourself to blame. I would uh, recommend... Uh, living in a run-down single-wide trailer on an acre of land uh, that you own over renting a uh, one of these goddamn McMansions any day of the year. <clears throat> you know, you just... You, and, and, and this is where... Uh, People just, you know, just roll their eyes at me. If, if I was a 32-year-old millennial right now, uh, I could find a way to buy something to live in uh, on an acre of land somewhere for uh, well under $50,000 for the, for the price of a pickup truck. Uh, I could own a, 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 I don't give a shit what, what anybody says. It can be, probably be done here in Florida. Somewhere uh, I, I could find an acre of land with an old trailer or a little shack on it. Uh, 
so I, I, I don't want to hear the whining that, uh, that millennials and Gen Zers, uh, can they afford uh, some fucking house that they have no fucking business uh, looking at? So you say so you do have to take some fucking responsibility uh, for uh, for yourself, and uh, you, you can sit here and whine about it's the boomers that ruined it for you, and I just keep on whining. If you want to play victim mode, it, this is very easy time to be a victim. And that I, uh, Zachary, you don't sound like a victim. You don't sound like a young man who's interested in being a whiny little victim, blaming us mean old blue meanie boomers for your uh, inability to uh, to be thrifty. So uh, your number one goal should be to buy a piece of land and you know, put a tiny house on it for the next six months uh, I, I'm gonna be uh, for the next six months of my life uh, I will either be sleeping in a 10 foot by 12 foot house an 8 by 10 foot house or a 7 foot 7 by 7 foot house for the next six months of my life you add up all three of, uh, of these houses and they would add up to less than 400 square feet. So I, 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 I have no sympathy. Uh, so anyway, that is that piece of advice. And uh, And after that, <clears throat> obviously, I'm one of these crazy people who still believes uh, do as I say, not as I do, having a partner. Uh, won't get into that whine, but uh, finding a, a partner to face the collapse in. Uh, I, uh, I, I, you know, what else? I mean, obviously, I encourage you to learn uh, organic gardening skills, but I don't pretend for one minute that uh, you're, you're going to be able, could you live, could you keep from starving to death uh, on a garden that you could grow on a, on an acre of land. Yes, I, I could keep myself alive. I have the ability and the garden to keep myself alive for 365 days a year. I mean, I physically could keep myself from starving to death. On uh, b between uh, the, the the plot of land I own and uh, my knowledge about organic gardening, but but it would suck. It would suck. Uh, and I there's a brief mention of of prepping. I I think preppers are some of the biggest clueless fucking morons on the planet today. Uh, it, 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 it's an absolutely lost cause the only thing and people think I am joking the only thing that uh, I am doing to prep is I own about 50 pairs of cheap reading glasses you know from the various dollar stores stock up even if your vision is fine now, just get a variety of, uh, of, of reading glasses, even if you don't do them now. And if you wonder why, watch Lord of the Flies. Watch the original 
the at least the original version of Lord of the Flies when Piggy loses his glasses. Uh, it would absolutely suck not to have glasses. But this whole prepping thing, if you're thinking about prepping, uh, there, 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 there's no future in it. Why anybody thinks, number one, they can survive what's coming. They're out of their fucking minds. And the more important, why would you want to? Why would anybody... Oh, as long as we're on that, uh, as long as we're on that one, uh, an, an exit strategy, an exit pill, again, do as I say, not as I do, and, and, and I have got to do this in my own life. I hear that fentanyl, uh, there, there's about uh, 300 train loads of fentanyl coming into this country every day. I, I would have no more idea right now. If someone said, uh, Hammond, here's $10,000. Uh, I want you by the end of today to get me enough fentanyl to kill myself and you can have the keep the change. Uh, I, I would have no idea how to do it. Uh, I have no clue how to get my hands on some fentanyl. But as long as I'm on this, you do need to stock up on your fentanyl. Uh, it really is not supposed to be that hard to find fentanyl. Uh, but buy yourself some fentanyl and have an exit strategy. Uh, I don't think that the collapse is going, you know, get to the point of, uh, my neighbor killing me for my last can of Beanie Weenies, but I'm 64, I'm not 32. If I were 32, uh, I, I, would, I would be making, getting a fatal dose of fentanyl for myself and, and, and get it for, get, you know, get, get 30 uh, fatal doses of fentanyl to hand out to your friends. Uh, let's see, uh, learning to play an acoustic musical instrument, uh, that is way up the list, uh, and that music, uh, and acoustic music that does not depend on electricity, uh, is going to be more and more important, uh, yeah, I mean, I play harmonica. If I can play a harmonica, anybody can. So, uh, music. It's, uh, it is almost as important as knowing how to raise your own food. I, I never see this in these preppers and survivalists talking about learning how to play an acoustic music instrument. Uh, very, very high on the list of getting out there and enjoying it while you still can. I mean, these, these are things that, that I have found in my life. Uh, playing acoustic music out in nature with uh, people I love uh, is, is one of the absolute great joys of my life, and especially if you don't have a partner. And of course, having a partner that also plays a uh, an instrument. But uh, that still gets back to what are you going to do for money, and. Uh, that, 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 that is the big one. Uh, that's the big one. What are you going to do for money? Uh, as I say, the number one thing you're going to do for money is learn how to live without it. And set your sights low. 
set your sights low in, in, in your housing, number one, and your vehicle, number two. Uh, and, uh, oh yeah, credit cards. I do not own a credit card. Tear up the credit card. If you absolutely have to get a mortgage to get into a house, to, you know, an interest bearing mortgage, uh, buckle down and get that damn uh, piece of land paid off, whatever you have to do. But uh, I don't have a lot of advice. Uh, you know, real estate is what worked for me. Uh, but the real estate industry has completely uh, what just happened recently. There is no, just don't plan on a career in real estate. Uh, that ain't going to happen. Don't plan on a career in freelance journalism. Uh, that ain't going to happen. Don't plan on uh, being a musician, a rock star. That ain't going to happen. Uh, but Zach, if you are a strong young man and, and want to make $20 an hour uh, and live anywhere near Ithaca, New York, uh, I have a job for you, uh, $20 an hour, and I will even feed you. And really, that is it. It all gets down to don't breed, get out there and enjoy it while you still can, and uh, figure out <clears throat> a way to make the absolute minimum amount of money you need to make to afford a minimalist lifestyle as long as that includes an acre of land with some sort of structure on it to keep you out of the rain. And do not breed <clears throat> and get out there and enjoy it while you still can which is what I am getting ready to do because uh, my gas sucking truck is packed up. I got to get my gas sucking gator with the flat tire up on the trailer. And I am New York bound, baby. I should be pulling into Bugs in a Jar Farm on May 2nd or May 3rd. Come see me at Bugs in a Jar Farm. But from Dunnellan, Florida, I am saying, bye guys.